You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who art ed? Try to spice it. Who art is Mr. Wood <laughs> art ed me? Yeah. Either way, it, it, it's ambiguous. It, it works on so many levels. I know. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and for this week's Fun Fact Friday, it's going to be almost like a little art history you're wrong about, because this one is about Rembrandt's famous painting, The Night Watch. And one of the most interesting things that a lot of people do not realize about the painting The Night Watch is it's not actually called The Night Watch because it didn't take place at night. The actual title to the piece was Militia Company of District 2 under the command of Captain Franz Bannockock. The painting commonly referred to as The Night Watch was one of the most famous paintings of the Dutch Golden Age. Rembrandt painted this piece in 1642, but by the late 18th century, it had darkened considerably because of just dirt and the dark varnish that had been used. And so at that time, it looked like a night scene and people started to refer to it as the night watch. And I suppose the name just stuck because the title, The Night Watch, does roll off the tongue a little bit more easily than Militia Company of District 2 under the command of Captain Franz Bannockock. I mean, even if this was intended to be a daytime scene, I still prefer to refer to it as The Night Watch. Now, among the things that's truly remarkable about this piece is the size. It is 11.9 feet tall and just over 14 feet wide. It is absolutely massive, and to see the amount of detail put into every inch of that monumental canvas, you can see why it took him three years to paint it. Another of the notable features is the dramatic use of light and shadow. I mean, there's this spotlight effect on some of the figures that just draws the viewer's attention and sort of leads the eye around the composition. And finally, there's just this amazing sense of motion in the figures. Traditionally, military groups would have been sort of static and posed for a group portrait like this, but... Rembrandt shows us all of those people in motion in a very natural sort of pose, or at least as natural as it can be when there's a woman with the claws of a dead chicken on her belt somewhere in the picture. Of course, this being a Baroque era painting, those chicken claws were actually a symbol of the arquebusiers, the sort of like the gunmen, the militia group that this painting represents. She's also holding the militia's goblet. The man in front of her is wearing a helmet uh, with an oak leaf, and that was also another traditional motif of this group. And finally, the dead chicken is supposed to be sort of symbolic of their victory over an adversary. I mean, I guess the, the, the chickens are dead is, it seems like a really poignant way to symbolically and also in a juvenile way insult one's adversaries. But I feel like Rembrandt's massive painting did enough to boost the ego of those militiamen and their poultry victory, so I'm going to move on from that and all of that classical art history symbolism to talk about a really cool recent development. This piece has been photographed in high resolution. Specifically, 717 gigapixel image resolution. The Operation Night Watch research team succeeded in making the highest resolution detailed photograph of an artwork ever. It is now possible to zoom in to almost like microscopic levels, pin sharp particles of the individual pigments, and you can see every individual brushstroke and the cracks on the surface of this painting. I read somewhere that each pixel in this image is like the size of a red blood cell. Now, you might be asking, how on earth could somebody make 
an image that is 717 gigapixels. I mean, to just wrap your brain around that, how many pixels it took to make that image, that's 717 with nine zeros behind it. Each pixel represents an area of five micrometers. It was made not not by taking one photograph, but they actually made a composite out of 8,439 individual photographs. The team used a 100 megapixel camera, and for those photo nerds out there wondering about what equipment was used, it was the 100 megapixel Hasselblad H6D 400MS camera. And after taking a series of thousands of high-resolution, 100-megapixel detail shots of, like, 5 by 4 centimeter areas of the canvas, they were able to use AI to stitch those small photographs together and form a large image. And when I say large, the file size is 5.6 terabytes. Now, if you're wondering why on earth would they invest so much time and effort into making such a gigantic digital image of this painting, I'm right there with you. Because it's not like this picture was not previously well documented. They actually already had a roughly 50 gigabit image of this same photo. So they put in a lot of time and resources to make another digital copy that was about four times the resolution, probably just so it would be the record holder. But hey, if there's one artist that deserves something that is needlessly labor-intensive and hyper-focused and detailed, it's Rembrandt. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted? If you found this tolerable, please like and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week in the show notes on Twitter at WoodArtEd and on the website whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.